what he has to speak. He's a loving God, he's a faithful God. We know that his eyes run to and fro all over the planet. And he is looking for someone who will be willing to trust without any question. Someone who will not reason. Someone who will not make analysis of everything. Someone who would say yes to him. Yes in everything. Someone who would say, God has said, I believe. That's period. Full stop. I don't want to reason. Thank you, Lord. This is the way you live. And this is the way you want your people to live. Lord, we thank you that you emptied yourself. We empty ourselves too. You empty yourself of one form. You are always in the form of God. And you took the form of a man. You took the form of a bond servant. Lord, that is amazing. We, too, let ourself go and let God. And Lord, we choose to be vessels. It's wonderful that you have called us vessels. We are your vessels. Flow through us, we pray. Fill us today, we pray. To the glory of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wonderful to see everybody. Vessels, I was thinking. Yesterday I was reading about, uh, uh, hearing about a website, Becoming Like Jesus. It's a very good idea. Wonderful idea. To become like Jesus. I'm not against it. I'm not against it. But what about becoming our vessel only? He calls us vessel. If I am a vessel, then he flows through me. Then I can fulfill what is written by Paul. Very simple. It is no more I. I'm forgetting about likeness. I'm vessel. For all eternity, I will be a vessel. You say, oh, will I grow? Yes, I will be expanded. Yes, Christ will increase in me. Here on earth, I seek the measure of the Lord. I want to attend to the stature of Christ Jesus. But there, I will keep being filled as a vessel. Bride is going to be a vessel. Bride is going to let him flow through her. And then the whole world will be filled with the glory of God. You have heard about that? That's a prophecy. As the water covers the sea. The glory of the Lord. That was God's intention. And God's intentions cannot be frustrated. They can be delayed a bit. Because of our behavior, because of the way we think. But God's intention will always be there. They will be fulfilled. The intention of God for creating man in his image was to flow through this man. It will not be one, it will not be two. It will be millions of them. And that's why the scripture says in one place, you might have read it, if the authority would know what the death of Christ will attain, they will not crucify him. Devil's mind could not comprehend this. He couldn't comprehend this. That one dies who has never sinned, then there will be seeds everywhere. Then there will be so many vessels through whom he will flow. I'm using the words carefully. 
As I said, I'm not have any quarrel with those who talk about this, who write about this. I want to be like Jesus. Well, that's not a bad idea. But scripturally speaking, it is no more I. I comes in likeness as well. Don't you think so? Or am I the only one who is thinking? I, wherever I comes, the trouble comes. Well, I'm not, because there can be pride. Even Apostle Paul was afraid to be proud. And he knew, God knew it. He can easily be proud. So crushing came. Was it a sickness? No. Why? Because in the scripture, these thorns in the flesh are human beings. And the story of Paul is very simple. Everywhere he would go, there will be lashes, there will be imprisonment, there will be rejection, there will be stoning. Once he was stoned to death, I simply think that that was the time when he died, that considered him dead, pulled him out. And when the disciples are around, he got up. I think that was the time when he went up and he saw and he saw what was up. And he said, what I saw there, no man can express. It is beyond expression. Human language will not be able to express this. I, that's why I doubt some of the people who uh, share their experience of near death and their talent. Sometimes they differ from each other. I tell you, Reality where the Lord is, the presence of God is, no man's language can express it. Language is too little. Our language is finite. How can finite language explain fully the infinite? That's why Paul said, foolishness of preaching. Have you heard this phrase? It's called foolishness of preaching because I'm trying to express someone who knows no limit. He knows no limit. He is a God who is all powerful. Oh, I tell you, my friend, if we can only, only believe he is all powerful, he is so wonderful, he is so glorious, we will be better off. In the morning, I had a different sermon. I wanted to talk about anointing. We will talk about anointing too, maybe if it's time. I had a hard time all night. Off and on. At one point, I said, Lord, I tell you, I'm confessing it before you. I said, Lord, if you tell me I'm taking you today, I will not be like Hezekiah. I will not be like, like a man who would say, no, sir, I have to do more. I said, I will be coming. It was not easy. At about half past five, I think it was half past five, the Lord began to talk to me, will you trust me? There's a group of people and I'm telling them what the Lord has told me. I'm telling them, the group of people witnessing, trying to evangelize. And I'm telling them, the Lord has told me, trust him. Trust him for the salvation of people. Trust him so that he will be in charge of everything, in everything you trust. Let's read the scripture, please. So I thought I will share this simple truth. Trust him. You have tried. You have done whatever you could. Try trusting. Try trusting, my friend. And I tell you, trusting is not easy. Why is it not easy? Every day you go to work, Majority of the decisions we make, nothing to do with the trust in God. Are you with me? So we are so used to doing our own things, trusting in God fully is odd. It's not easy. It's not going to be easy. But let's read Proverbs chapter 3. We have, we have read it many times, but I tell you, my friend, the Lord spoke to me very clearly, and the things were different from then on. Trust me. Will you trust me in this? 
Will you trust me in this awkward situation? Will you trust me, the one who manages the whole universe? Scientists cannot comprehend how big is the universe. They don't know. Scientists do not know how great is the universe. And he manages it. He manages it. Not only that, uh, before we go to this, let's see how he manages. Hebrew chapter 1 verse 3, before we go there, before we go to Proverbs, let's go see. That's how he manages. If he can manage things like that, is my problem too big for him? I think so, but it's not true. We think, Lord, you do not know my problem. Oh, only if you would know my problem, my situation, or oh, my childhood, uh, what other people did to me. The Lord says, I know everything. We were with a wonderful people of God and we told them simply, listen, either you live your life or Christ lives. Your problem is not bigger than him. But it's a difficult decision. Am I going to live? Or am I going to live? I'm going to let him live. Is it self? Or let self leave and then Christ reigns. I don't want to divert your attention from this. Chapter 1 verse 3. Let's stick to this. It's trust my friend. If I can trust him in everything. Scripture says without any, you know, you can't modify it. You cannot change it. In everything, give thanks. Give thanks in everything. And then he says, why should you give thanks? Because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning, concerning you. But the Lord is praying for. He says, that's my will for you. I'm shaping you. Will you let me shape you? So I was talking to Brother Francis. I said, sometimes we are so zealous to pray for everyone. We want to lay hand on everyone. And sometimes we, we go to a sick fellow and we say, in the name of Jesus, get out. And the Lord simply said, take your hands away from this man. I'm shaping him. I love him. He's my baby. I discipline him. Don't try to exercise your will on him. You get it? We're so eager to kick every disease and sometimes the Lord says, I'm using it. We want to be free. We want to be free. And we say, Lord, let me out, let me out. And the Lord says, my child, let me in. Let me in, please. Let me reign re in you. Let me take care of you from inside. Outward things are changing. Things seen are changing. Things unseen are not going to change. That's why I'm not started yet. But we will talk about inward kingdom. It's a big subject. And I'm not ready to share with you now. But we will share. This is how he manages. Who? Christ. He's talking about Christ who being the brightness of his glory, brightness of the glory of God. We have, I was talking in the radio uh, the other day, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. And uh, I was simply saying he has not left this decision to any wise man. He calls himself with such name that to call him just a prophet is an insult to him. He sends prophet. I said in the radio, it goes all over the world. I said, will a prophet dare to say, I am the word of God? They preach the word of God, my friend. They can't claim to be the word of God. Message is always greater than the messenger. You must remember it. And about him is written, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. All things. How many things? All things were created by him. Well, if everything is created by him, can he fix them? Anyone? It's told about, it's a story told by someone 
that uh, in the beginning when uh, this man who created Ford Company, what was the name? Mr. Ford? Henry Ford. Henry Ford was just passing and uh, this man just bought the car from the company and uh, he had to open the bonnet and he was fixing few things. And Henry Ford came on the scene and he said, what's the problem? He said, just bought the car and it's not going. He said, no problem. He took a little screwdriver, fixed it, said, go. He said, who are you? He said, I'm Henry Ford. I'm the, I'm the one who is, who is the owner and everything. The owner knows where is the problem. The owner knows where it has to be fixed. He knows every DNA, my friend. He knows every cell in your body. And every cell, the scientists tell us, is coded. There's a coded message on every cell in your body. Who did the coding? Jesus did it. And this is the Jesus, my friend. And we still hesitate trusting him. I hesitate trusting him. I've suffered many things trusting him. I have trusted myself so much that it is an odd thing sometimes to trust. Now we say, I trust the Lord. Do you? Do you really? As long as the trouble doesn't come, it's wonderful. You say, how do you know? I have got a very classical story. The story is of Job. Job was a good man. He was a blameless man. Does it mean he was a sinless man? No, he was not a sinless man. Everyone who is born a woman is sinful. Blameless means he was walking according to the light he was given. He was given some light. And he was walking according to that light. And if you walk according to the light you have been given, he will give you more light. He was wonderful. Thank you, Lord. God has given, God has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Then the pressure is applied. As soon the pressure is applied, things come out of his mind and on the tongue, the things come on his tongue. God looks at him. Is this my boy? <laughs> he calls God things that ought not to be said. Job said. Read about the book of Job and you will see Job questions God's justice. He said, you are the same. It doesn't matter. You don't distinguish. You wicked is the same way as wise and all this. And in the end, the Lord had to say, who is this who is speaking nonsense? And Job said, must be me. The Lord said, yes, it's you. He repented, of course, and the Lord gave, gave him restoration. But my friend... What I'm talking about is he was trusting God. Pressure came. Things came out of his mouth. That was abomination. That was against God. They were there. They were there. They didn't come on his mouth until the pressure came. And then God gave him double. I was encouraged by, by this vision that the Lord gave him. My son, would you trust me? Will you trust me in everything? Would you fully trust me in everything? This is what we are saying about Jesus, who being the brightness, this, why can't we trust him? Because he manages the whole universe. He who can manage the whole universe, is your affairs too hard for him? And amazingly, you, you might be surprised, the man like Moses tries to limit him. Men like Moses, who had seen God face to face, talked to him, seen the glory of God, saw his majesty in uh, Egypt, and the great Pharaoh bowed the knee and he said, go. Everybody wanted them to go out. Everybody saw the power. And he saw the sea opening, powerful display of the power of God. And God says, I'm going to give them meat. They're asking meat. I'm going to give them meat. He said, Lord, are you speaking from your mind? Are you okay? That's what he said. Are you all right? He said, oh, will you kill all the animals on the mountains? Will you take all the fish from the sea? 
How will you do it? In fact, he was simply saying, how will you do it? He said to God, he's teaching to God. God is impossible. Just like the disciples were saying, 200 dinar will not be sufficient that everyone will ever bite. They limited Christ, they limited him. And here is a man who saw him face to face. He's trying to limit him. He says, what will you do? How will you do? And God has to simply rebuke him. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the Lord, my friend? That is, trust is not easy. Man like Moses. Disciples who have been with Jesus limited him. Do you know what they were trying to do? They were trying to have dominion over the Lord. How? Lord, can't you see his sun is going down? Send them away. Send them away. They dared to command him. Can you see that? This is what we human beings try to do. They dare to command the Lord. Give him instruction. Is it? Was they trying to give him, give him an instruction? Yes. Oh yes, of course. They were trying to give him a, Send them away. Though, as if he could not see. <laughs> he could see. He created the sun. He created everything. He said, you give them something to eat. Your responsibility. Oh, I tell you, my friend. God looks at you... Because people are in trouble. People are frightened of the things that are coming. They are not happy. They have given themselves to gadgets. They are now going to give themselves to IT. And they are going to give AI, artificial intelligence. They are going to give themselves to uh, virtual reality. They are going to be afraid. Many are afraid. Oh my, we are going to die because of the rays that are going to come in. I'm talking about 5G. Those who have got more knowledge, they are more afraid. We need to come to a point, my friend, where our DNA is converted to his DNA. Then we will survive. Time is coming. I tell you, those who understand this uh, I. AI, those who understand 5G, they know it will bring disaster. It's going to bring disaster. It will, bring, it will give them whatever they need, whatever the people need. But my friend, at the same time, your DNA will not be able to handle it. Your own DNA will not be able to handle it. You have got to remember this. Do you know what Jesus said? Call no man on earth your... Father, why? I think the reason was very simple. I've got my DNA in your spirit. Let this DNA go to your soul and then it touch your body and then it touch your cells and you'll be able to survive the disaster that is coming. This is our God. He is express image of his person. Upholding all things. That's what I want to say to you. This is the point I want to say. Upholding how many things? All, all things. Every, every micro, microscope. Everything. Every, everything that cannot be seen with the naked eye. And upholding all things by the word of his power. Everything was created by his word. Everything is upheld. Oh, can't he uphold my body? He's upholding everything. And, but my friend, it's a matter of trust. Will I trust him? Will I let him do it? Will I do my own things? And will I let him do it, my friend? Upholding. If you simply take this with you, meditation is, he is upholding everything. Well, those who are scientists here, they know, you know that they are baffled that there is, a, there is a gap between every atom. And this gap they do not know. I, they have, I think they have given it a name as well. Ether or something. If you know it, please speak out. There is a name given to it. But they say, we are amazed how the atom is together. We know why is it together. He upholds all things. Every atom is upheld. 
by the word of his power that is why you can trust the word that is why jesus said the word of god cannot be broken word of god cannot be broken because if the word of god will be broken the world will collapse no sir his word will never ever be broken that's why i say the lord spoke to me and he said can't you trust me can you trust me for the body need can you trust me for everything around can you listen to me the matter is only listening his sheep hear his voice and upholding the things by the word of his power of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high he is sitting down at the right hand of the father where are you am i in him am i in him if i am in him my friend i'm sitting with him in heavenly places in christ bible speaks about that bible speaks about it's a serious it's a serious talk i tell you my friend what i'm saying is very serious if we can take it seriously and begin to trust in him wait for him let him speak let him do it we will be better off okay let's come to our scripture that we announced in the beginning I'll carry it away and but it was the same thing i i think it's linked with what i'm trying to tell you is the trust simple childlike trust jesus said until you become like children you cannot enter into the kingdom of god i would say the kingdom of god as a door too tiny that the adults cannot enter into it someone said the kingdom of god the door is so small so short adult cannot enter into it jesus said in a different way if you do not accept the kingdom of god like a child you won't enter into it it's got to have a childlike faith it has to go so let's go to proverb and god gives us instruction and it's very simple instruction I personally believe we need to put it in our heart meditate on them they work Proverb chapter 3 starting from verse 5 shall we Let's start from maybe in the beginning we can start from the beginning it's a very powerful scripture It doesn't matter how much scripture I know It will work when I meditate on it I need to own it I need to meditate on it. From here to here is a long distance. I was reading the book by Campbell McAlpine and he told us a story. He said I in the process of writing my book I was visiting some people and he said I visited a priest, an Anglican priest, and he told his story. He said I was in a conference, conference of all the priests and he said one day when i was in the meeting i saw someone sitting on the stage with the questionable clothes a questionable posture he was sitting totally totally unaware of anyone around he was sitting there sometimes his mouth was half open and he was sitting on the stage and This priest said to the person sitting next to him what is he doing there First of all his clothes were not very good shabby clothes and he was not very attractive person and he said he looked like that I said how can I go He just looked at the man and he said I so best of time what can he teach me what can he preach to me and then he thought about the respect of the priest he was in the middle and he had to cross many he has to jump over many so he said i'll sit there and he said the man got up when his turn came he was the speaker because he was told he is the speaker and he began to recite simply a hymn and he said when he began to recite that hymn it was like 
the mantle of God that came upon the whole congregation. They were spellbound. He said, I felt the presence of God. It was like a mantle. And then he began to take one verse and he began to open it. I said, I, he said, I could not take my eyes off of the man. He began to expound in a manner that I've never heard. He said, after he has preached, it was my, 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 my time to run after him. And I asked him, sir, where did you learn these truths? I want to know your library. What books have you been reading? Oh, he said, no, 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 I'm not an educated man or great. You know, I was kicked out of the school because I was not very good at learning. I live in that, uh, that, that house in the, in the field. And what I do every day, I get up in the morning and I put, as I read the scripture, and I put some verses to memory. And then I began to meditate on those verses. And I know when it comes from here to there. I know it. And it's all the result of that. Until I meditate on what I read, I will not be getting anything. If you depend only on the preacher that he will preach, and I can go and practice, it will not work. It will not work as your personal meditation. It is your personal encounter with God. It is your personal intimacy with God that will cause you to be the proper vessel. Otherwise, we are living, everybody is living, and the church people are living. My friend, this is very important. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. David speaks about this over and over again. I meditate on your word. I keep your precept. They are my meditation day and night. And my friend, you know the first psalm in which it's all about meditation. This truthful man, this prosperous man, it's prosperous because he is meditating on his word. Why am I emphasizing it? We're living in a busy world. And for intimacy, men and women don't have time. We haven't got much time for intimacy. We have got so many time for so many other things. And we think so many things. And we haven't got time. If I will not have time, I will not have power with the Lord. I will just be a nominal Christian, ordinary person. Just ordinary Christian, like other people who are Christian. For length of days and long life, and the peace shall they add to you. You're looking for peace? Go to the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. Let this be your first priority. For length of days, that means you will be strong. You will have long life. And long life, length of days, long life, and peace shall they add. Who will add long life and peace and length of days? Who? The word. The law of God. The word of God. The word of God will do that. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about, the about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. That's what we need to do. When you sit together and you begin to read the scripture on your own, your telephone is off, you are not allowing anyone to disturb. I am on a great appointment. I am with the most important person in my life. Don't you dare to disturb me. Until something happens that, is, uh, that you cannot avoid. It can happen. That on mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Carry on please. We're talking about the trust. It's very easy, you know. The life is so heavy. We have got so much to think. We can easily get lost. You're sitting here. You're going somewhere else. You're gone. Nobody knows where you've gone. Sometimes in good place, sometimes you do not know where he is wandering. But we do. We do. You're right here. Right here. I tell you, I'm speaking, but you're not there. You're listening, but you're not there. 
try. I'm not going to listen to a thing. Right in this meeting, they sit down. And they say, I'm not listening. I've got other things to think. My friend, it's very important to consider the scripture well. So sh shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. What if you, keep it there. What if you keep, what if you keep this favor of God? Well, if the favor of God is upon you, my friend, you have got blessing that you cannot attain, you cannot keep. Favor of God is so powerful. So, the result of this will be you shall find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. If you are accepted in the sight of God and man, you're more than conqueror. You're complete in him. In him you are everything, my friend. Now we can go to verse 5, please. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all thine understanding. That was the point I was trying to bring home. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not upon thine own understanding. I tell you, that is the crux of the problem. Actually, I would say that is the greatest problem. We have been exercising our understanding. We are not totally given up to the Lord. Self is ruling. Self has dominion. Christ's dominion is nowhere seen. I am making decisions. I am doing things. I am doing all these things, my friend. And it's self on the throne and Jesus dethroned. Let's talk about some people. Abraham was put on God. He put his trust on God, I should say. He was living among his people. He was happy. No worry. No anxiety. God says to him, leave your relatives. Leave everyone and go to the place where I will send you. He went, it's a cultural thing, I tell you. He went to, the, went to Daddy and he said, Daddy, God has told me to go and leave you. And his daddy, because if you read carefully, you will know it. His daddy said, my son, your son, your brother is dead. We'll go with you. Couldn't argue with daddy. It was a cultural thing. Daddy went with him. I would say old man went with him. And it took old man for 15 years to die. They came to a place, and the place name of Parched Place, Haran. That was Parched Place. Nothing grows. When you are disobedient, even in little thing, you come to a parched place. For 15 years, the Lord didn't speak a word. Tara died. And then Abraham left. Was it a complete obedience? No. It was not complete obedience yet. Why? Lot went with him. It was not God's idea. God didn't say, take Lot with you. Was Lot pain? Show sure pain. He was a pain in the neck until he left. God didn't show him his inheritance. Lot has to leave. That's the, I'm talking about trust. Man like Abraham trusted God. But today the Christianity is very simple. Little bit of Christ, a lot of self. Devil says, I'm happy with this kind of walk. It's give and take. I won't disturb you. You give up something, I give up something. Let's go together. No trouble, no problem. Well, if I'm not getting it to opposite position to the devil, I'm walking with him. He, whom he makes son, he chastises. He chastises. And we have only learned one thing. I'm going to go and I'm going to rebuke it. Sometimes we end up rebuking what God is doing. We don't know the will of God. 
I rebuke this power. I rebuke this sickness. God says, you hand off from this child. He's my baby. He's my son. I'm, I'm fixing him. I am applying my discipline to him. Let him learn something. You pray. Only prayer. Lord, let the measure of Christ be in this man. That's a very safe. I, I tell you the safest prayer you can pray for anyone is, Lord, let the measure of Christ be seen in this person. I want to see the measure of Christ in him. So let's go and see some other people, my friend. I'm just selecting few of them. David was a man after God's own heart, anointed by Samuel. Not a king yet. Still a shepherd boy, and sometime he will play. And the demons will be driven from soul's life. Man is sent, not to fight, but to deliver some supplies to the brother. Three brothers were there. They were big, and they uh, thought they can fight. And the fight was on. And his brother said, and you laugh sometimes when you hear of what his brother... Have you come to see the fight? Was any fight going there? No, they were running for cover. This man will come day and night, and for 40 days, he, was, he has been making mockery of each and every one of them, and all they were running was for cover. He will come and he says, give me a man. Everybody will run to the cover, including soul. Nobody. Nobody. That means... Nobody was trusting in the army of Israel. Can we say that? Nobody. Nobody. Was everyone in covenant? Yes. They didn't know the covenant. Why? No anointing. No anointing. They were full of themselves. They were under the government of the one who is a spirit. And you cannot have match with him until you have the spirit with you. David had that spiritual power. David was the anointed. Trust in the Lord with all you, thine heart. And are we still there? That's okay. That's okay. I was thinking that that's the scripture. David comes on the scene. David comes on the scene and everyone and the atmosphere is charged with fear. Is he affected? No, he's not affected by this fear. He is affected by the one who has taken control of him. He is led by the Holy Spirit. And the only thing he sees is, the man is too big to miss. He is talking about a stone. He's not talking about a sword. He's not talking about a javelin. That's why when he looked at him, he said, you come to me with javelin, with the sword. I come to you in the name of the Lord. And my friend, that is called trust. That was, and that is with which God is pleased. You cannot please by your deeds. No, no, no. Deeds are good, but they come out of faith. What does the scripture say? It's impossible to please God without faith. It's faith that pleases. Faith to see power of God. Faith to say to the Lord, Come Lord, take over. I leave myself aside. Let Christ live through me. I'm simply a vessel. Let's look very briefly about Gideon. Gideon was a man who was full of fear, wasn't he? He was hiding from the, from the enemy because the enemy was about to come. And he was hiding from the enemy. And he hears a voice and he was alerted by the voice. He looked, whom he's calling. He said, you man of valor. Angel said, he said, are you talking to me? Do you see I'm a man of valor? Do I look like a man of valor? He said, no, I call you man of valor. <laughs> you may not look like a man of valor. You, man of valor means valiant man, strong man. I said, I'm hiding here. I am afraid. I am frightful of the people who will come. And you, he said, I've called you. You are a man of valor. You're a valiant man. Of course, you know, then he listened because he, right in front of him was the angel who was calling him. He said, I'm calling you. I'm not calling anyone else. 
So he makes announcement. How many people come? 33,000. God said, they're too many. You may be thinking, I've done it. I want all the glory. I don't want to share with my glory with any flesh. Okay, he said, everyone fearful, everyone afraid, he gives some condition, go. How many left? 10,000. How many are left now? 22. God said, there are too many. And in the end, how many were left? 300. 300. God says, I can give the victory. They won the day. That is, trust my friend, all through the life of the people of Israel, God was teaching them to trust him. One of the things was, they were farmer. The economy was agricultural. They were farmer. God said, listen, you're going to sow six years, seven years, leave the land. Eighth year you sow, ninth year you. I said, you will say, what we will do for these three years? Oh, he said, don't you trust me? I can give you on sixth year. That will be more than sufficient for the three years. And they won't listen. They won't listen. God was trying to teach them one thing. Trust me. Trust me, I can handle. Trust me, do not use your own, own means. I know which means to use to set you free. My friend Joseph was the same. Joseph was selected as a governor. Listen to me. Some of us are from India. Suppose today there is no other government but the government of the queen. Queen makes Emmanuel the governor of this Great Britain. I think the first thing I will do if I will be in his place, maybe he is humble and he doesn't want to do it, I will do this thing. I will send a chartered plane and I will send some people, gather all my relatives and bring them into my palace. Did Joseph do it? Nine years he did not see the face of his brethren. He knew God will bring them one day. If he will do it, it will be premature. Could he not call them? He could send an army. They're living this place, this is their location. Uh, it's a family and a family of Jacob. You will ask, you will find them. Bring them here. I don't want them to suffer anymore. He trusted the Lord all these years, about 13 years, I think. He had learned to trust God. One day, God will bring them here, if you want. They came. After nine years of his governorship, seven years were gone. Now, the seven years they're in famine. After two years they came, nine years he waited. Didn't think about anything. Didn't he love his father? Yes, he loved. Did he love his brother? Yes. He won't do things prematurely. We can speak of someone, Joshua. Joshua could act without trust, and he tried. Almost killed. Almost got killed. You see how? He looked at a man with a drawn sword. It was a threatening sword. Because he thought, are you the, with the enemy or with us? He said, with none. I am with one who will trust. Will you let me set that strategy? He had strategy. He had sent two spies as well. My friend, God made the strategy. And they didn't have to lose battle. Then the battle of AI. He trusted in him. What happened? Casualty. That's what I'm trying to say. Will it be me? Or will it be trust in God? Will it be self? Or will it be the Lord? Look and see about so many other people. I simply want to say to us today, let's trust. Trust and obey. You think there is no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. We will speak about anointing, but this, I believe, was a message that we need to take it on board. Praise and glory be to Jesus. Oh, God's people, only if we can trust. Only if we can trust in everything. Lean not on your own understanding. The Lord says, 
in all your ways acknowledge God and he'll do it stand in the presence of the living God as we acknowledge that he knows no limit as we acknowledge that he is powerful God as we acknowledge that he who runs the universe nobody knows how big cannot reach it he manages everything even he manages every every cell Can't he manage my affairs? The problem is the trust. Will I trust him? Will I let him do it? Wonderful Jesus, we praise you. We adore you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. If you lift your hand up, my friend, and let's make this decision today. The Holy Spirit is with you. He's in you. He can enable us to do what we have promised to the Lord. Let's say this together. Lord Jesus, you're trustworthy because of your great love. The love that gave himself up so that we could be your temple. We could be your house. And you could live in us. It's marvelous in our sight. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We want to learn how to lean on you. I want to trust you in everything. In the name of Jesus.